On May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens, a volcano in Washington state, erupted. There had been warning signs, many small earthquakes, steam releases, and a large bulge on the north side of the mountain. But still, the ferocity of the explosion surprised those who studied the volcano. The eruption killed 57 people and destroyed homes, bridges, railways, and roads, becoming the deadliest volcanic event in United States history. It was a tragic event, no doubt. Yet, from it, scientists have gathered a wealth of information about the origin of rocks and geologic features, as well as the processes needed to form them. These glimpses into the Earth's geologic power provide incredible insight into the destructive nature of such catastrophes. And, strangely enough, this unassuming volcano and the surrounding area have become a continual source of evidence in support of a global flood and young Earth. Interested? Let's find out more on today's episode of Creation Connection. Welcome to Creation Connection. I'm Michael. Before we begin, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Let's go. Volcanic eruptions are nothing new. These fire-spewing mountains have been blowing their tops for millennia. We have Krakatoa, Pelly, Vesuvius. I mean, this wasn't even the first time Mount St. Helens erupted. So what makes this particular instance of lava and steam so special? Well, the truth is, the explosion, while spectacular, was nothing that hasn't occurred historically before. But never before has such intense research followed a volcanic eruption. Mount St. Helens quickly became the most studied volcano in history as it provided a unique opportunity for the study of an active volcano and research on how the surrounding ecosystems would respond to such a cataclysmic event. So, what did we learn from this? Oh yeah, this sure is hot. The answer is a lot. But before we dig into the specifics, we need to lay some groundwork. It's important to understand that, generally, the scientific community claims that the Earth is old. Somewhere along the lines of 4.5 billion years old. It's, quite frankly, an unfathomable amount of time. The scientists obtained this number by using a whole lot of math, quite a bit of guesswork, and by holding to a scientific framework known as uniformitarianism. Wait, wait, I know we've mentioned uniformitarianism before on this show, but this time we're gonna focus on it a bit more. The simplest way to explain it is this. Uniformitarianism posits the idea that the Earth's geological processes have always been occurring at an extremely slow pace. For millions upon millions upon millions of years, and that the features we see today are just the results of those processes. See, when a uniformitarian scientist looks at Grand Canyon or a mountain range, the immediate assumption is that such formations occurred over long periods of time. But what if such processes didn't take so long to occur? What if, instead of millions of years, a canyon could be carved in hours or days? Well, The series of events that unfolded in Washington State on that catastrophic day over 40 years ago started with a large earthquake, which triggered a massive landslide, which finally led to the violent volcanic eruption. While the eruption itself was extremely destructive, it was the ice atop the volcano that devastated areas great distances from the crater itself. The once frozen water rushed down the side of Mount St. Helens mixing with ash and debris in a deadly torrent. Soil, rocks, trees, anything in its path was stripped from the surface and unceremoniously dumped along rivers that led from the volcano. It's a little bit hard to appreciate the 
great depth of these gorges which have been cut, there's probably a 100 foot drop between the top and the bottom, which we are now zooming in on. After the angry mountain cooled off, up to 600 feet of new sediment had been deposited at its base. But strangely enough, this collection of debris, dirt, ash, and the remains of both plants and animals settled in a familiar way. Horizontal layers, just like the layers we see throughout the geologic record. These layers were laid down in hours though, not days, not years, not even decades. These layers show on a smaller scale that the geologic formations we see can be formed quite rapidly. Dr. Clary, do you have anything to say about it? Mount St. Helens really impacted geology. We, we see that in the philosophy of geology books now that are written. They do recognize there was these occasional catastrophic events, but they just can't get around to thinking that there was a big year-long catastrophic event where a lot of this stuff happened very, very quickly. They had to recognize that there's rapid deposition of layers. You know, they saw them. In a day, you get, in hours, you just get layer upon layer upon layer of material being deposited. You've got a rapid erosion. They recognized that these things were going on, that there's these big catastrophic events that do take place on occasion. But it gets better. In 1982, a second eruption caused the new ice that had formed in the volcano's crater to melt and caused yet another aquatic outpouring. The water carved through the sediment layers that had been laid down just a couple of years prior, creating an impressive steep-sided canyon. Dubbed the Little Grand Canyon, this formation formed quite quickly. Surprisingly so for a geologic feature that uniformitarian scientists typically believe takes millions of years to form. Hmm. Dating isn't easy. In fact, it's one of the most difficult things you can do. Of course, I'm talking about the rocks. Oh, no, you thought, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. Trying to fit something so important into a preconceived box you've already built is hard but there's a way to make it easier. All you have to do is make the right assumptions. Uniformitarian scientists have created complicated ways to date the rocks they find, and those dates typically lead back to millions of years, and we're expected to trust those dates. But what if those analyses give incorrect ages for rocks of known ages? Well, after the eruption of Mount St. Helens, a new rock dome began to grow on top of the mountain. This is brand new rock, literally formed within the past couple of decades. Surely the radiometric dating methods scientists use would give an accurate measurement, right? No, the answer is no. In fact, standard analysis gives an age range of nearly 350,000 to 2.8 million years. Wildly incorrect. So then what other rocks have been labeled as much older than they really are? All of them. What happens to the surrounding landscape after a violent volcanic eruption? Well, in the immediate aftermath, the devastation is obvious. But what about in the years following such an event? After Mount St. Helens blew its top, experts predicted that the area around the mountain could take at least 100 years, if not more, to recover from the blast. But those predictions don't quite line up with reality. After only 20 years, biologists noticed the speedy recovery of plants and animals. And now, over 40 years later, the blast zone is a beautifully lush forest. Prior to the eruption, conventional ecologists thought that life would slowly creep back into the ash and mud, but recolonization was extremely rapid, even causing ecologists to recalibrate some of their thinking. Why was there such a difference in the expected recovery time and what actually occurred. It all comes back to the idea of uniformitarianism. If your worldview is centered around the notion that it takes long ages for anything to occur, then your predictions will reflect that. I can hear you asking the question now, what's the point, Michael? Well, let me bring it home for you. The scientific community at large claims that the world is ancient. Mm -hmm. 
but I would like to counter that statement. The eruption of Mount St. Helens showed that features a geologist would expect to take millions of years to form can happen quickly through catastrophic processes. And not only that, we see that the recovery from such catastrophes occurs far more quickly than uniformitarians would expect. In the book of Genesis, the historic account of a global flood is recorded. This account tells us that it lasted for a little over a year and that it began when the fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. Now, I'm no scientist, but it sounds as though this involved a great deal of geologic activity. Right, Dr. Clary? So Mount St. Helens really tells us a lot. It shows and demonstrates, here's the catastrophic conditions from the, kind of a small eruption. Everything we look at, there's no tranquil conditions, there's no millions of years of time. These things are all deposited fast, rapidly. So the catastrophic events that we see in the world can be tied back directly to what we witnessed in Mount St. Helens back in 1980, 1982, when it erupted two times. We can see the evidence of rapid deposition, which is what we see the rock layers show. And we can see rapid erosion, which is what we see on the top of the earth as the water was receding. Most of our major canyons all formed at the surface down. If the earth really took millions of years to deposit all these layers, there should have been canyons everywhere. Actually, you shouldn't have these big flat lying layers. If these things are millions of years old, they should have been eroded. They should have had canyons cut into them. There shouldn't be this continuous layers that you can follow. And it's not just one layer. It's most of the layers, thousands and thousands of feet of sediment that extend across the major continents. But that little small reminder of, you know, in our backyard, so to speak, in the state of Washington shows that catastrophic conditions really do tell the tale of, of what we see in the rock record. To form geologic features, it either takes a little bit of water in a long time or a lot of water in a short time. Modern catastrophes like the Mount St. Helens eruption clearly demonstrate this. The flood was an immensely catastrophic event, the only one of its kind, and the sheer amount of water involved can easily account for the geologic features we see that uniformitarian scientists tell us are clear evidence of great age. Earth doesn't look old, it looks flooded. But how would the Earth recover from such a catastrophic event? How would plants regrow in such a short time frame? How would the animals repopulate the Earth? Well, remember, the area around Mount St. Helens bounced back with remarkable speed. And we know from Genesis that God created creatures with the purpose to multiply and fill the earth. If filling the earth is their purpose, then he equipped them to do just that. There's no need for compromise. There's no need for millions or billions of years, just 6,000 years and one massively catastrophic event that changed the face of the earth. Thanks for watching Creation Connection. New episodes drop on Wednesdays. To learn more about this incredible eruption, check out our resources at icr.org. And make sure to like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time on Creation Connection. Uh, oh, shiny. Anybody uh, missing a ring? My precious? Hello? Where, where'd you go?